Okay, quiz 17.3 is going to be in many respects exactly like 17.2. Uh, this time we have a weak acid and we're titrating with sodium hydroxide. Um, so this first question, uh, if you add P NaOH slowly and you monitor the pH, how will you know where the equivalence point has been reached? Just like in the last quiz, it will be the point where the um, uh, pH is rising most sharply. Unlike with the last uh, quiz, we cannot depend on that happening at a pH equal to 7, but it still will be where the rise is most sharp. And then uh, the next question is to find the concentration, so let's go back up to our details here. Um, our uh, acid is HNO2, so we'll say the volume of HNO2, uh, that's the 25.00 milliliters. Um, and uh, the concentration of HNO2 I shall leave blank for right now. And um, the uh, volume of NaOH uh, in particular, the equivalence volume is going to be the 23.42. And then finally, the concentration of NaOH is going to be equal to 0 0.575 molar concentration. So we find the concentration of the HNO2, CH. NO2 is going to equal volume NaOH times concentration NaOH divided by the volume of HNO2. And technically that's the volume of NaOH at the equivalence point. Um, so we plug those numbers in and we get a concentration of 0 0.539. Question two, we find the, um, uh, the initial concentration, uh, which is really the goal of most titrations, and that's where you would end, but we're going to really dig deep now. Uh, can we find what the pH should have been um, before you added any base? Um, and so uh, here we know the initial concentration of the HNO2. Uh, but it is a weak acid, not a strong acid, so I can't, oops, here's the initial concentration. I can't just take the negative log of that. I need to do an ice table. Well, we've done a lot of ice tables by now, so um, I'm just going to put up the, some of the relevant values. The Ka for HNO2 is 5.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. Um, and from that, we can get a pKa and that's going to equal 3.25 and we don't need it yet but later on we'll need the Kb for its conjugate base, the nitrite ion and uh, that's going to be 1.786 times 10 to the negative 11. And I'm carrying an extra sig fig there because that uh, is an intermediate calculation and that would have been a substantial round uh, so I decided to carry the extra digit. Okay, now with all that, can we find out the initial pH? Well, I know that uh, Ka is equal to x squared over my initial concentration of HA minus x. And we'll usually say that that x is small. And so it ends up that x is equal to the square root of Ka times your initial concentration of the acid. And that's standard for all of our weak acids, and so we don't really need to write out a full ice table at this point. Well, um, if I do that, then I get uh, x equal to 0 0.0174, and uh, this is indeed small compared to our initial concentration, this initial concentration minus x, uh, it's going to be about 3.2%.
Remember, 5% is our threshold. So the good news is there's no need to solve the quadratic formula. We can go ahead and take this uh, to represent our H plus concentration. And therefore, the pH is equal to the negative log of x. And in this case, that's going to equal 1.76. 1.76 is our initial pH. Okay? Now, uh, what is the pH at the equivalence point? For a strong acid, that was just 7. But here, at equivalence, instead of producing a neutral solution, what we will have done is converted all of our nitrous acid into nitrite ion. And nitrite ion is a base. This is why we need the Kb. So first of all, we're going to need to figure out what is the um, concentration of NO2 at the equivalence point. Well, that's going to equal the moles of NO2, uh, which is going to be the concentration of um, NaOH times the volume of NaOH at equivalence. I use those so that I don't have to deal with rounding errors, because uh, this right here, I did round a little bit. These numbers are exactly as they're given. But remember, the volume times the concentration of nitrous acid should be equal to the volume times the concentration of sodium hydroxide. Um, and so, this is just a way for me to make sure I'm not propagating my rounding errors. And then uh, the total volume is going to be the 25 milliliters plus the 23.42 milliliters. So that is a 48.42 milliliters. And um, anyway, what this uh, gives me uh, is... Where am I? There we are. <laughs> uh, it is 0 0.278 molar. 0 0.278 molar. And this number here, the concentration times the volume, we'll need that number later anyway. That's 13.47 millimoles. Okay, so if this is the molar concentration of nitrite at equivalence, well now we can say that the Kb is going to equal x squared over NO2 minus minus x, and we'll assume that this x is small. Well, it was kind of a close call for the nitrous acid, but nitrite has a very small Kb. And so that'll definitely be small. And again, uh, we can kind of simplify this. This time it's the OH minus concentration that is going to equal the square root of the Kb times our nitrite ion concentration. Um, and uh, that's going to equal 2.23 times 10 to the negative 6 molar. And we can find the pH equal to 14 plus the log of 2.23 times 10 to the negative 6. This is going to give us a pH of 8.35. That's the pH at equivalence. Um, looking at our table in the textbook of different uh, uh, color acid base indicators. Well, if it's uh, ch if equivalence point is going to be above neutral, then it's either phenolphthalein or alizarin yellow, and um, this is much more appropriate for phenolphthalein. In fact, this is perfect. It's like the ideal range for using phenolphthalein as your color indicator. Okay. What will be the pH after 11.71 milliliters of NaOH have been added? Well, that is exactly one half of the equivalence volume. And when we've done that, 
we've converted exactly one half of our moles of, nit of nitrous acid into nitrite. And if we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, uh, when you have equal amounts of uh, nitrous acid and nitrite ion, the pH will equal the pKa. So for question six, the pH is going to equal pKa. That's always the case for weak acid or weak base titrations when you reach precisely halfway to the equivalence point. Okay, and now we do uh, a quarter milliliter to either side of that equivalence point. Um, so 23.67 milliliters is a quarter milliliter beyond the equivalence point. 23.17 milliliters is a quarter milliliter before the equivalence point. Um, and so we're going to do a BCA table like before, like with the um, uh, strong acid, strong base titration. But this time it's going to be a lot more tricky. If I have HNO2 plus OH minus, this time it's going to produce um, uh, the NO2 minus ion plus the water. And we don't care about the water. But we do care about that nitrite ion. So here's our before, change, and after. And oh, I've gone and erased it, but um, I'm going to say that NHNO2, um, NHNO2 was the 13.47 um, millimoles. Okay, uh, remember that can come from the product of these two numbers without any um, rounding errors or the product of those two numbers. Um, and so that is going to be our initial amount of nitrous acid, 13.47. Now NOH is going to be um, the NaOH concentration times the 23.67 milliliters, and that ends up being 13.61 millimoles. 13.61. And we'll start with none of that nitrite. Well, which of these is our limiting reactant? It'll be the nitrous acid, because this is the point beyond the equivalence point. So we'll subtract 13.47, subtract 13.47. Here we add 13.47, and we'll end up with none of the nitrous acid and 0.14 millimoles of hydroxide and 13.47 millimoles of nitrite. Now in this case, because we have some hydroxide present, then the amount of nitrite doesn't matter. And this will be much like the uh, point we did in the strong acid titration that was beyond the equivalence point. I'll take my 0 0.14 millimoles. I'll divide it by that total volume, um, which is the uh, 25 milliliters we start with and the 23.67 milliliters. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, wrong way, wrong way. There it is on the PDF right there. Okay, um, and that is going to give us a total of 48.67 milliliters. And this gives us an OH minus concentration of 2.88 times 10 to the negative third molar. That is our OH minus concentration. 2.88 times 10 to the negative third. And we can turn that into a pH. The pH is going to be 11.46. OK, so just barely beyond the equivalence point, um, 
going to be 11.46. Remember, the equivalence point was 8.35, and so we've um, already moved three pH units in just a quarter milliliter. Well, that was certainly interesting, but not quite as crazy as it can get. So let's do one more. Um, uh, if we are a quarter milliliter short of the equivalence point, that's 23.17 milliliters, we get 13.32. Millimoles. We still have zero here. 13.32 millimoles. That will be our change value. Minus 13.32, minus 13.32, plus 13.32. So we end up with 13.32 here. We end up with zero there. And we end up with, um, where are we? Uh, 0 0.15. Now at this point, you could do a number of different things. Um, you can recognize that uh, I have amounts of both the acid and the conjugate base present, and say, perhaps we should use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. pH is going to be equal to the pKa. 3.25 plus the log of our base over our acid. These are millimoles, not molar concentration, but it doesn't matter because you're taking the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid, and they're divided by the same volume. So you can do this in moles, millimoles, it doesn't matter. So that'll be 13.32 over 0.15. I actually am not entirely sure what pH this is going to uh, give us. This is a, um, something that I did not do. So hang on a second. Let's pull up uh, my calculator here. And uh, 3.25 plus the base 10 log of 13.32 divided by 0.15. And this is going to give us a 5.20, a pH of 5.20, according to the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Now, you might say uh, this ratio of base over acid is well beyond the buffer region. And you might worry, is my, um, uh, uh, is, um, my assumptions that are built into the uh, Henderson-Hasselbalch equation valid? Maybe I ought to go back to a complete form where Ka is going to equal x times, oh, first we'll convert these into concentrations. So 13.32 divided by the total volume of 48.17. And 0 0.15 divided by 48.17. And these will give us molar concentrations, which we'll need if we're doing uh, Ka values instead of just, um, instead of just the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So these will give us uh, 0 0.277 molar and uh, 0 0.0 0, 0, 0311 molar. Okay, we've got our molar concentrations and now um, uh, we can say that uh, Ka is going to be x and uh, 0 0.277 plus x over 0 0.00311 minus x. 
And actually, when I did this, I got a little bit crazy and I said, you know, neutral water already has some hydronium in it. 1 times 10 to the negative 7th is the initial concentration of H+. Plus. And if X is going to be really small, maybe we need to be extra careful and do 1 E negative 7 plus X. Um, and this is obviously going to require the quadratic formula uh, unless we can simplify everything. But the whole point of uh, not using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is to say, I'm worried I can't simplify anything. So I allowed a um, algebraic solver to solve for this. And I got um, a value for X that was equal to 6.29 times 10 to the negative 6. And that x represents our um, H3O plus concentration now because that's an ice table based off of Ka. Um, and that gives me a pH equal to 5.20. In this case, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation was actually just fine. All right, um, are, you, are you wondering where this came from? Sorry, maybe I'm going too fast. I wanted to get everything all out there, and maybe now I'll erase my um, BCA table, and I'll show you exactly where that crazy expression came from. This is HNO2 plus H2O in equilibrium with H3O plus plus NO2 minus. Here's my ice table. Don't care about water. And I said, well, if I have um, uh, an initial nitrite concentration of 0 0.277 molar, and then for pure water, H3O plus isn't 0. It's actually uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 7, if we want to get really technical and we're worried about x being a really small value, then that might actually be important. We've been saying that's 0 up until now, because it's pretty darn close to 0. But in this case, we'll be extra careful. And here we have 0 0.00311 molar, and negative x plus x plus x. And here we get 1 times 10 to the negative 7 plus x, 0 0.277 plus x and 0 0.00311 minus x. And that's where I got this from. And I just let Wolfram Alpha, that website that solves things for you, I let that solve it for me. Now, uh, the next last question is just to have you draw the graph. Well, we can do even better than that. I have plotted the graph uh, in uh, a spreadsheet program. So this one starts out looking much the same like the last one. I've got my volume of HNO2, my concentration of AOH, my volume at equivalence point. This gives me an initial concentration of HNO2. I've also included here the Ka. From that I calculate the pKa and calculate the Kb. And now I've got uh, the volume added. And um, for every a hundredth of a milliliter, I calculate the total millimoles of HNO2. It's just like before. I've got my initial amount of HNO2 minus the volume times the concentration of NaOH. Only um, this time I'm keeping track of... Um, uh, oh, that number shouldn't be there. That's okay. Uh, I'm keeping track of the amount of my conjugate base that is present. Let me go ahead and uh, delete this column here. It should be deleted until we reach the equivalence point. Can I just make them all zeros? That's what I really want to do. My amount of hydroxide left over is going to be zero. 
until I reach the equivalence point. Okay, so my millimoles of uh, HNO2 are going down, my millimoles of NO2 minus are going up, and um, I've got a total volume, which is the 25 milliliters plus the volume added, and I can um, here just take my millimoles of HNO2 divided by the total volume to get a concentration of HNO2, and the same to get a concentration of NO2 minus. Uh, well, uh, with these two concentrations, I can calculate a pH using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Right here, I've got the ratio of base over acid, and um, when I don't have any base, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation gives me an error. So there's the first weakness of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Remember, we used an ice table to calculate the pH here. Um, but everywhere else, we're good to go. And if we uh, scroll all the way down here, oop, there we go, to the equivalence point volume, um, then <coughs> uh, right here at the point where I have um, uh, zero millimoles of, uh, of acid, sorry, right here, zero millimoles of acid and 13.4665 millimoles of base. Well, here my ratio blows up and again, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation fails. You may recall that we used the um, uh, ice table for the conjugate base to calculate the pH right at that equivalence point. But everywhere in between, Henderson-Hasselbalch equation works. And then uh, beyond the equivalence point, I'm going to have this constant amount of nitrite left over, but it doesn't matter because uh, there's going to be some excess amount of hydroxide. Um, uh, and so I've got the moles of hydroxide here, and we can calculate the concentration of hydroxide. So... Ba -ba -ba -ba. If I come over here a little bit, you can see I've got my Henderson-Hasselbalch calculations, and then I've got some uh, uh, pH based on the excess amount of hydroxide. I've got those calculations picking up past the equivalence point right here, and um, they just take the, um, uh, the amount of uh, hydroxide divided by the total volume take the log of that and add it to 14, like we've done. Uh, oh, no, nope, don't want that. Okay, so what we can do is plot those two curves. I've decided to keep them separate just to be extra careful. Uh, here you see the dark blue curve is the Henderson-Hasselbalch pH, and it uh, starts really low. Uh, it, we don't even have a point at the zero milliliters and it starts really low, and that's obviously not gonna agree with the numbers that we calculated. But um, it follows up to about right here, and then this is where our first point with excess hydroxide is and carries on the pH curve right there. Um, so what's this yellow one? I decided to go and uh, calculate the actual quadratic formula at every point, and this is, is great. I, I um, I made no assumptions whatsoever, even considering that uh, uh, H3O plus has uh, 10 to the negative seventh concentration initially. Um, and I calculated my A, B, and C coefficients here. I calculated X based on the quadratic formula, and then, uh, and then the pH. And uh, the pH here, at that zero point that the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation couldn't even solve, that's gonna match what the ice table told us. And uh, as well, oops, all the way down here, at the equivalence point, we can find the pH, and that also matches what the um, uh, ice table told us. And then we can carry on with the OH minus excess concentration calculations. And so this is just uh, sort of showing how um, you can uh, compare the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation 
to the full quadratic equation. And to be honest, um, over the overwhelming majority of this range, the uh, correspondence is excellent. But way down here, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation really falls apart. And that's because it overestimates how, mu how much the uh, acid is going to dissociate um, when it is very dilute. So uh, for relatively strong acids, the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is going to perform badly when you have a higher proportion of the conjugate acid. For relatively strong bases, you would actually have the opposite. You would have poor performance of the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation over here, where that ratio of base over acid favors the base. But anyway, this is uh, posted uh, on Canvas, and it gets into probably more detail than you ever hoped to see. But, um, uh, but I thought it was a lot of fun to make a really good rigorous spreadsheet. There's actually a whole other way to do um, titration curves and pH and stuff that you will learn uh, either next year or in two years. They're called alpha fractions and they're fabulous and you'll love alpha fractions and they make all of this actually a lot easier. No need to use the quadratic formula, but we're not gonna get into that. So I just wanted to let you know this crazy rabbit hole indeed goes even deeper.